We use many different terms to talk about random variables. Two such terms are discrete and continuous random variables. In the first example from before, we roll a dice and note down the number of dots. This number could be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. That is clearly a countable set, and we call this type of random variable a discrete random variable. So this one here is discrete. Contrarily, if we roll a dice and note down the distance, we get some number that is just a real positive number. And it's not possible to count these numbers. This is an uncountable set. And we call such functions or such random variables continuous random variables. So discrete random variable and continuous random variable. A discrete random variable is one where the range is countable. So examples of countable ranges could be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, as we saw before. It could be all natural numbers, or it could be something similar like 0 0.1. When talking about discrete random variables, we can define a probability mass function. This one tells us at which values x the probability mass of the random variable lies. So it's defined as the probability of the event with all outcomes such that the value of x is equal to little x. So if you draw a picture from before, we have the sample space here, we have our range here, so that's sx, and we have a particular value that will output, so a particular outcome that will give the value little x here, but there may be an another outcome here that also gives us that value, and there may be a third one here. So we can define such an event, and this here is exactly this event a x of a is equal to little x. And we can measure the probability that the random experiment actually yields an outcome inside this event here. This is this probability, and this is our definition of the probability mass function. This probability actually implies that if we sum over all values, all possible value of, S, uh, of x in the range, we get a 1. So the, the sum of all probabilities here the sum of the whole probability mass function is 1. And also it implies that if we take a value outside the range, we get 0 here. So if x is not in the range, not in the range, we get 0. There are many different discrete random variables. We'll give here a few examples. Our first example is a uniform discrete random variable. This is one that is defined by the probability mass function p of x being constant for any x inside the range, and but 0 for all others. So 0 for, for x not in sx. Often this first example here is modeled by such a uniform discrete random variable where we assign a probability of 1, 6 to each of these realizations, possible realizations, so each of these values here, 1 through 6. A perhaps even simpler random variable is the Bernoulli random variable. A Bernoulli random variable has probability mass function that is defined as p, little p, if, if x is 1, and 1 minus p if x is 0, and it's 0 elsewhere. So in this case, the range of this value here is 0 and 1. A special case of a Bernoulli random variable is, of course, when p is 1 half, then it takes the value 
1 with probability 1 half, but also the value 0 with probability 1 half. This means that in the case where little p is 1 half, a Bernoulli random variable is actually a uniform discrete random variable over the set 0 and 1. A third example of a discrete random variable is the binomial random variable. This one has probability mass function defined as this binomial coefficient, n choose x. It also has a probability parameter, little p, so it's p raised to the x and 1 minus p raised to n minus x. And here x can be 0, 1, up to 2n, so that is sx, which can be this set here. The fourth example is the Poisson random variable, which has a probability mass function p of x that depends on a parameter lambda and has this form here, so lambda to the power x divided by x factorial. In this case, the range is 0, 1, 2, etc. So the range here is all natural numbers including 0. Now we have looked at, the, at discrete random variables and we had on an example here with the dice where we had one discrete random variable. We also had a different example of a continuous random variable where the range was not countable. In the example here where we rolled the dice and noted down the distance the range was non-negative real numbers. So this is clearly an uncountable set and a continuous random variable. We may define continuous random variables as random variables with an uncountable or continuous range. And examples here could be um, a range which is, of course, R plus as we saw, so all positive reals. It could be that the range would be the real numbers, the whole real line, or you could also think about a subset of the real line, so any interval, for instance, 0 until 2. We could exclude or include the endpoint in this interval as we want, so open or closed intervals are perfectly fine. For continuous random variables, it's slightly more difficult to define probabilities. We can't define probabilities of particular values, or particular realizations. Those are all zero, in fact. What we need to do instead is to consider the probability of an event that the random variable lies between a, a point A and a point B. So that's an interval A to B. So this is the event defined as all the outcomes as such that the random variable actually ends up in between A and B. We, because this is very complicated to write, we often just write the probability of x being between a and b. This is clearly not exactly correct, but it, we have used a notation to write so. Strictly speaking, we have not defined that yet. So let's do that. So we are thinking of some interval, for instance, or uh, some other set but we could call this set here for AX, so that would be this interval here. And we want to figure out what's the probability that the random variable will give out some number in this set. The problem is we have defined only probabilities of events, so sets in the sample space. So what we need to do is in fact just to define an event that corresponds to the, uh, the case where the random variable actually ends up in this set AX. So let's call that event A for no good reason. It could have some very funny form here in the sample space. We don't know that. That will be A. And we will define it as all the outcomes such that x of a, so such that the realization actually ends up inside this set here. So now, 
for every value inside AX, we will have a corresponding value or perhaps more corresponding values here in the event A. For this event A, it's now perfectly fine to measure its probability with our probability measure. So we will make a convention now that the probability of so we write, when we write the probability of x belonging to some set here ax, what we really mean is the probability of, of a. So the probability that we have this event occurring here. So we may, may write, if you want to have it, a, a longhand probability of a such that x s sends a into our set ax. So in a similar way, we can define the probability of x being greater than some constant c. We can define, of course, the probability of x being less than some constant c, or the probability that x being equal to some constant c, and so on. For many random variables, or for most random variables that we will consider in this course, we can write this up as an integral of a certain function p, little p, of x dx, so we, we integrate over this interval here from a to b, this function here. This function here now is called the probability density function, or PDF. So the PDF is a non-negative function that integrates to 1. So we can write this in mathematical terms as the PDF of any x is greater than or equal to zero for any x in the, in the range. And it integrates to 1, so the integral from, from minus infinity, in fact, to plus infinity of p of x dx is always 1. And in fact, any function that is non-negative and integrate to 1 qualifies to be a PDF. In this course we'll consider many different random variables. I'll give a few examples of continuous random variables. The first example is a uniform random variable where we have a PDF, probability density function, that takes value 1 over b minus a if x lies somewhere in between a and b. So in this case, it would be 1 over b minus a, this value here, and 0 elsewhere. So 0 here and 0 there. For uniform random variable, we often use a shorthand notation. So we say that x is distributed uniformly over the interval a to b. Uniform random variables appear in many places. Most computer systems can generate uniform random variables or pseudo-random variables, so they appear very often in simulations. Also, round-off errors are approximately uniform, so if you take some random variable and round it off, then the error you commit by rounding off is approximately uniform, uniformly distributed. A second example of a continuous random variable is the exponential random variable, which has a PDF given like this. It's an exponential function whenever x is greater than 0, and it's 0 whenever x is less than 0. Whenever x is less than 0, this takes the value 0, and when x is larger than 0, it decays exponentially. Like so. So this here is the lambda e minus lambda x. It has a parameter lambda. 
exponential PDFs or exponential random variables are uh, often seen. Exponential random variables are often seen in Turing theory. Our shorthand for an exponentially distributed random variable is x tilde exp of the parameter lambda. Our third example of a continuous random variable is a Gaussian or normal random variable. It has a PDF which is given like so, 1 divided by the square root of 2 pi times sigma squared, where sigma is a parameter called a variant. We will get back to that. And then we have this exponential term here, 1 divided by 2 times sigma squared, x minus mu. Mu is a mean parameter. We will also get back to that. We can graph this um, this PDF and it looks like this classical bell-shaped curve which is symmetric about mu and it has a width that is de determined by this sigma here. So in this case we have a shorthand notation which is x is normal distributed with parameter mu comma sigma square. Gaussian random variables or normal random variables appear in many many applications. For instance it's very common to model electrical noise as Gaussian or normal. Also sums of many many independent random variables are approximately Gaussian. This is what we also know as the central limit theorem.